good afternoon to everyone. Humanitarian leadership, uh, leadership in humanitarian action is not uh, an easy topic to, to deal with now Friday in the afternoon, but we will try to do something. Uh, to do something. If we speak uh, about humanitarian action, we will speak also about human beings, because the humanitarian, the humanitarian agencies, the, they were established for saving uh, people's life. And our workers, the humanitarian workers, always they are, they are living surrounded by humanity. Uh, if you ask the field staff, as I did to, uh, to FEDA in Gaza Street, about how she can define leadership or a leader, she will uh, she answer. What we need is a boss that always has the door open and time to speak with us. She's very lucky because she has that. <laughs> uh, due uh, the kind of our interventions, the humanitarian agencies, we are out to really decentralize and delegate all the decision processes and uh, the coordination itself. The humanitarian leaders, the people who is in charge, always they are entitled to make a performance and to take a level of decisions, which is quite uncommon in other professional sectors. In the field, the international NGOs, we will always rely on the, on the personal, uh, personal skills of the people in charge. Oliver once said, the difference between the past and now is that you didn't leave us alone. He's from former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. And we all know, we all have the experience that even if in the worst scenario, in the most difficult of circumstances, if you have the adequate person or a bunch, a small group of really committed people, we can arrive to achieve any kind of goal without any kind of problem. Juro from Serbia, he's so confident about the people that he's working with that uh, he arrived to say it. He sent me in and brought me back. Juro started like local staff and at the moment is a logistic consultant uh, working worldwide, only because of his motivation and commitment on the humanitarian action. Uh, but we also know that the personal differences, different agendas, many other reasons, uh, can collapse a very successful intervention just in a couple of weeks. And the system, the intervention just collapsed, bam, on any circumstance. First emergency response, long term, uh, strategies, whatever. And uh, we also know that when a successful team leaves the place, a successful leader leaves the place, it's quite likely that it's going to happen a strong turnover among the staff. They don't get adapted to the new profile, to the new context that they have to work with. And this, regretfully, is not very often understood. Uh, we have really a problem, the humanitarian agencies. And before continuing, I would like to make you one question. Just for five seconds, answer mentally. If I'm telling you the word leadership, what does it mean for you? The answers, all of them, they are right. Because all of you, you have a, and you have a very clear picture about what leadership uh, represents. But this is not very well understood, and the NGOs, we are not feeling very comfortable speaking about leadership. And somehow, there is a gap that we, want to, we don't want to address. Because, or maybe, maybe because still uh, the Western countries, we are uh, influenced about what happened during the, how leadership was understood during the 30s decade of the last century, and in Spain in much closer times, no? But if we address the issue of leadership, most part of the NGO members, they will visualize it like this. And this kind of cases also, they can happen. We have people like this. But we have also to find a, a middle point. We have to allow that the people with experience enough can perform and develop their skills under a clear guidance and under a clear framework. Um, I do love uh, Chaplin, but I would rather also to introduce you much more this other example. That is going to come with, uh, to stay with us, like the pictures of uh, the other uh, human uh, worldwide leaders, and after we will come back to him. Um, if, you speak, if we speak about uh, human resources, if a human resources uh, wants to define what, uh, what is leadership, well, well, uh, uh, we'll define you that the most basic rule on human resources is that absolutely for clear, the person who works on a daily basis on the same task is the one who knows it better. But this neither happens. No, almost, almost never it will happen. Um, 
Somehow, they, uh, again, the head offices, they have a uh, difficult to assume concepts like core responsibility or collective leadership, collective uh, management. When the missions are successful, so everyone wants to join the party. I was there. I was there, no, for sure, here, this country was fantastic, I will do it, I was there, no. But if the things are getting bad, immediately after, all of us, all of them, they will try to find a responsible. And never within us. No, we are not the responsibles. It has to be another one. It's uh, also very difficult to, uh, to understand what uh, does it mean, the sense of uh, collective leadership. We have to work on remote, we have to arrive to agreements with people that even we don't know, that they don't speak very uh, properly our own languages, that they have got horrible accents speaking foreign languages like myself speaking English. No, <laughs> I'm sorry for that. <laughs> sorry, Cespir. <laughs> um, but it's quite clear that the head offices, they have an apocalyptic fear to be challenged by the field. How he, she can dare. And this, Ali, I can tell you that for sure the gender balance works perfectly. There is no difference at all, no? We are the head office and we have the know-how. Well, I can put it that in doubt. I can put it really in doubt. Um, during my, uh, this uh, 12 years of experience, I'm, I learned to say to myself on every morning, you know, just looking, uh, watching on the, uh, on the mirror, I'm not working for the NGO. I'm work, I working for the people in need. And this organization is only the channel that allows me to do it. This is the only way that allow me to keep my motivation alive. Otherwise, I will be working for the private sector a long time ago. Or also, we can say it in a more radical way, no? Organizations. The organizations, the, the work comes from organs. But I have to say that the organizations, they don't have organs at all. They don't have guts when it's requested. And really, really many times, they don't have hearts when it's required. But. We didn't come here, we didn't come here on Friday just to be sad and uh, express all the problems, no? So we will try to have a positive focus, and the positive focus is going to be explained by, uh, by him. I'm really happy to introduce you to Sir Ernest Shackleton, who was in charge of the Trans-Antarctic expedition between 1914 and 1970. If you see the dates, it's in the middle of the First World War. It was the last royal uh, uh, geographical expedition. What happened to, to him and, him and his expedition is that in the meanwhile that they were en route, they got stuck in the middle of the pack ice, and after a few months, the ship was ate by the ice. But the ship was named Endurance. During 17 months, and counting only with 28 men, they were able to survive in the most difficult situation. Why? Because Shackleton was always an example to all of them. He never broke the rules and always invite them, sometimes enforce them, to act like a very, very well coordinated team, an integrated one. Remember, 17 months, 28, men's, uh, 28 men in the middle of the ice. When finally they were rescued, his first comment it was, not a life lost, but we have been through hell. Not a life lost. This is absolutely amazing. The first time that I read this story, I cried because it's something incredible, no? <laughs> um, and Sackleton teach me something that there is not a real challenge that you cannot achieve if you have the will. There, there are not borders at all. Only our ourselves, we are putting those borders. Um, maybe it's arriving, uh, it's arriving the time that we have to challenge the humanitarian status, the humanitarian system, no? And really put on the table, in front of our faces, what is our meaning on, on leadership. So the proposal that we can just offer and think about is very simple, because we need very simple answers. The proposal can be just the Humanitarian Leadership Task Force Group. But you know that all of us, we are working in the humanitarian sectors, and we really love a lot of acronyms. So we can just say that we are going to Establish the HLTFG, and there is not even a vowel. I, I, I cannot pronounce this at all. <laughs> it's absolutely cra crazy. But if we establish this, if there is a serious and really committed uh, task force, we can propose that the HLTFG can have a strong coordination between the UN agencies and all the humanitarian actors. That we have three questions. Very key ones that we can find an answer, very easy one, very, very silly ones. What we understand for humanitarian leaderships, put on the table, let's discuss about it. How core responsibility is defined on emergency or humanitarian situations. 
and what is the humanitarian actors consensus on collective leadership if we are able to give an answer to these just very simple three questions we are going to be able to understand that leadership what does it mean and how we can reinforce enhance our uh, our teams in order to make an adequate performance we can speak about vital signs the personal uh, the personal skills no one has all of them which are required but if they are clearly defined are going to be easily reinforced smoothly very easy basically very easily if we address the question of uh, corresponsibility all the internal decision making processes and the communication coordination mechanisms they can fall they can flow fluently without any kind of stepping stones in the stepping stone in the middle and if the things don't go don't go well we can uh, address them through a process through a positive approach and like a joint learning process and for collective leadership this is a hard one because if the leadership is there and all of us we want to rule the home we are all involved and the sense of contribution and our membership will increase if we are able to make our teams to believe about the kind of work that we are doing i can tell you i can assure you that there is not a border there is not a challenge that we cannot reach and be uh, being uh, successful just the answer of th these uh, three questions no and the humanitarian actors ourselves we will able to uh, to define how we need to understand uh, the leadership the criteria will be common and the uh, the current uh, misconceptions will be finished no matter the particular mandates that each organization has we can have a framework on a human based focus because sackleton had will because of them 28 men survived but as we are saving lives we must have a must on capital letters uh, we need to give a positive answer to feda to oliver to juro and to many other names that you know from your uh, working experiences and especially we have to delete from our speeches what one of my first and best bosses ever told me about one fill office and the situation that we were living there so many sitting bulls but not see you around. Thank you so much.